I'd like to continue our journey through the book of Exodus. We've been traveling with Moses and Aaron and uh, the people. The people have been doing some grumbling uh, already. Uh, and in chapter 16, God has fed the people with manna and with quail. <laughs> Let's take a look now at chapter 17. The Israelites are on the move. They move from the desert of sin, where they were in chapter 16, to uh, Rephidim. Uh, today it's called the Wadi Refiyat. It's eight miles northwest of Jebel Musa. So um, they are uh, bit by bit making their journey. Naturally, they're making their journey away from the coast so that the Egyptians won't uh, give them any problems and others, other tribes that are more guarding that usual trade route won't, won't really hassle them. Uh, so unfortunately, at this point, they have no water to drink. They've been going to different places where there was water, but now they're at a spot where there is no water. So uh, they grumble against Moses, uh, as they've been doing a lot of grumbling now against God, Moses, Aaron, everybody's mad with them. And um, they think now that they're going to die. Again, they're here in this desert and they're upset, upset with Moses. So Moses, as he does in all of these situations, turns to God. And a good model, role model for us, right? When we're in these difficult situations, what do we do? We turn to God. We ask for God's help. So Moses prays to the Lord, and he wanted to know what he should do with the people. Uh, he was afraid at this point that the people would stone him. So this is a more intense grumbling that's going on here. Before they had been grumbling, but now he's really afraid that they're going to stone him to death, and he's going to be dying here in the desert himself. The Lord told Moses, well, take your staff and go with some of the elders to the rock in Horeb, a special rock. Uh, and he should strike the rock and water would flow from it so the people could drink. And again, when God is saying this to Moses, I'm just kind of imagining myself in Moses' sandals here and staff, rock, water. <laughs> How is this going to happen? I mean, it's like, ah, what, what's the story here? Uh, the place uh, was called Masa. Uh, Masa is the place of the test. So Moses is being tested. The people are being tested. Everybody's got to pass this difficult test of trust in this staff and this rock. It's also called Meribah, the place of the quarreling. So it's referred to, and the Psalms will pick up on this, as either Masa, Meribah, uh, place of the test, place of the quarreling place where there's been some difficulty here in, in the journey. Uh, it was there that the Israelites tested the Lord, and they asked if the Lord was in their midst or not. So they really have been told that the Lord is with them, but they're like, is he really with us? Is this really happening? Is he really going to help us? So it's this back and forth. Should we believe? Should we not believe? And it's a challenge for them. Now, the Amalekites wage war against the Israelites uh, at Rephidim, and they controlled the caravan routes between Arabia and Egypt. So Moses uh, told, some, uh, told Joshua to pick out some of the uh, men and to engage in the Amalekites in battle. Uh, Moses said that he would be standing on top of the hill with his staff of God in his hand, and Aaron and Hur would be there with him. So uh, he delegates this to Joshua. The first mention we have of Joshua, and later on there's going to be, a, of course, a whole book in the Bible devoted to Joshua. So when Moses kept his hands up, uh, the battle went well for the Israelites. No problem. As soon as Moses, though, put his hands down, the Amalekites started to win the battle. So he's got to keep those hands up. So what do they do? They put a rock for Moses to sit on when he grows tired because standing for a long time is going to be difficult. So they put a rock. And then Aaron and her support his arms to hold them up. So Aaron was on one side, her was on the other. So don't worry, Moses, we'll help you with this. When you get tired, we'll help you. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. His hands stayed steady till sunset. Joshua won the battle. And he mowed down the Amalekites. So the Lord told Moses to let Joshua know that the Lord would blot out the Amalekites. So again, this idea of God assisting 
them in their battles. And we see this as typical of the uh, mentality at this time that God is involved in the battles. Of course, we know God doesn't get involved in it. God is nonviolent. God doesn't want that. But it was always described to God when you won the battle. It's because God was with you, helping you, sustaining you. When you lost the battle, you just didn't have enough trust in God, and that's why you lost. So Moses built an altar there. He called it uh, Yahweh Nisi, the Lord is my banner. Uh, the Lord takes up the banner to fight against the Amalekites. So again, they give this a special name. So what this shows us is that God is really helping Moses. God is helping Moses uh, every step of the way. He's helping him with the rock and the staff to get water for the people. He's helping them also in the battles. God is present with them. God is guiding them. And uh, interesting, these little superstitions about the hands being up, the hands being down. But again, it's a sign that they want to do everything they can to help the people and to really be faithful to the vision God gives them. But it's difficult. Uh, the people are facing a lot of difficulty. They're facing a lot of tension. And of course, they're going to take this out on Moses and Aaron. But we notice the beautiful sense here that Moses has, let's turn to God. There's a problem here. There's a difficulty. There's grumbling. People might stone me. I'll turn to God. Got this battle, this difficulty with the Amalekites. What am I going to do with them? Are they going to defeat us? I'll turn to God. Again, a good, uh, really, teaching for our own selves, right? How much we should turn to God for help. Certainly, we have to do our part. Uh, we have to give it full energy, and uh, we have to give all of our love and dedication. Uh, that's so important. But then always trusting, ultimately, in our God. And, of course, who is that very first one in the Bible? who trusted in God. Yes, it was our own beloved Father Abraham. And as you know, Father Abraham has many friends. Many friends has Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Keep on praising the Lord. God bless.